Hey, John here. So after this lesson, you should be able to play all the five string seventh arpeggios in the key of C major. And of course, that's gonna be the same arpeggios in all the keys related to C major, meaning the different modes. So if you know the, the arpeggios in C major, you also know the arpeggios in F Lydian, for example, D Dorian and so on. So I find this very important to know, and not only for the theory knowledge and the ear training, but also for sweep picking practice, because these shapes are fairly easy to play, believe it or not. They're actually easier than the, the triad arpeggios, because you have no barring in these shapes. And barring is something that really uh, sets a lot of people back initially when they try to learn sweep picking, because it's, it's so much to think about. So, I promise no barring in these shapes, so you can focus on that right hand technique and of course getting a good sound uh, all together. Now to help you learn this much faster, I put together a four step routine where we're going to go through all these arpeggios in four different ways. But don't worry, it's very easy to understand, it's not a long routine at all. Uh, and of course you should repeat it more than once, but the routine itself doesn't take long. And I'm going to show you exactly what it should sound like and how I practice this. Now of course we need to learn the initial shapes first. So the first shape it's gonna be this one, the C major seven shape, since we're in the key of C major. And by learning the, the order of these, like I said, you also know uh, not only the arpeggios, and the arpeggios are the same thing as the chords of the key. So you also know the order of the seventh chords in a major key and all its related modes. I'm gonna cover these shapes quite quickly and you have the tabs on my Patreon as well where I have the complete routine. And uh, let's just get started with the first ones. We got the C major one here. Uh, basically, this is almost like an E minor arpeggio, but with C in the bass instead. So we have three, seven on the A string, five on the D string, four, five, three, and seven. And it goes like this. And the picking that I use for all of these shapes it's gonna be down, hammer, down, 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 up, pull off, up, 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 and then you repeat. And now of course make sure you get that rest stroke. So if you look at this from the side, I'm not doing this. That's not sweeping, so you want to make sure you get the rest stroke. Uh, and I would also suggest that you practice this with this kind of tone, with the uh, bridge pickup instead of the neck, because it's way easier to hear if you make any mistakes. And when you practice this, if you follow this channel at all, you know I'm, I'm really big on uh, number one, accuracy, and number two, relaxation. So that's the first arpeggio shape. And now, as it happens, we're gonna play exactly the same shape uh, once we get up to the F as well. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, for the following two shapes, we're gonna play this minor seven shape. So that's gonna be five, eight on the A string, seven, five, six, and then five, seven. Uh, sorry, five, eight. So we have the same as we had here, actually. So it's quite easy to remember. So this is a D, D minor seven arpeggio. Then we have the same shape just from E here, so a whole step up. And now, as I said, we're gonna repeat the first major seven shape, but from F, so we have F major seven. And now we have a new one here, and this is uh, a G7. So it starts out like the major seven one. So we we'll have the, the, the root note, the third, the fifth. But now instead of the uh, major seven, we're gonna go to the F note here. So we have the flat seven. And this one, I actually use this fingering. It just fits uh, easier. You can go if you want. So the fingering is not that important. Just find something that feels logical and fits your hand. So, but I, I think this one is, is pretty good to use the th uh, just three fingers at the top here. Usually I would use three and four in most of these cases, but this one just fits the, the shape better. And now we, so this is a G7, and now we go up to the sixth chord, which is a minor seven. So again, we have that minor seven shape again. So it's exactly the same shape as we had here. 
so it's pretty easy to remember. Now, the last shape here is going to be a B minus 7 flat 5. So if you just play this shape first, see if you can recognize which of the other shapes it looks like. So, if you don't know it already, it's actually exactly like the major 7 shape, except for this note. So if we move this note down a half step, it's going to end up on a B flat, which isn't part of the key. So it, this is not the, the arpeggio that would be in the key, right? But when you get this B flat major 7 arpeggio, but you move this one up a half step, and you hear this as the root note, all the intervals will be heard against this root note. So then we get that B minor 7 flat 5 shape. So don't get confused here when we when I put the B flat here then we would basically uh, compare all the notes to this note the root note and then we would have a major third a fifth a major seven but since we have this note as a root note we get a minor third flat five flat seven and then same thing root flat third flat five flat seven so that's why it's the same shape but a completely different arpeggio so i don't want to get confused here so a quick recap before we go to the routine we have c major 7 d minor 7 e minor 7 f major 7 g7 a minor 7 and then the final one b minor 7 flat 5 then we're back where we started. Now it's a good idea also to see these as only numbers. So you've probably seen it somewhere where you can write out chord progressions using Roman numerals. And that's what you use to designate what point of the scale you built the chord. I'm not going to go into a theory lesson here, but it's a good idea to know that this is the major scale. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then back to 1. If you harmonize each of, of the notes of the major scale in this order, and you, you do that using 7th chords, you will always get 1 major 7, 2 minor 7, 3 minor 7, 4 major 7, 5 dominant 7, 6 minor 7, and then 7 is minor 7 flat 5. So it's a good idea to memorize that order. Right, so now I'm going to play through the routine. I'm going to use 8th notes at 80 BPMs. Just going to focus on transition time and a good tone and a relaxed execution. So the first part of the routine, we're just going to go from the first chord to the last chord. Alright, now the second part of the routine is just doing the same thing, but we start on the highest arpeggio and go down to the first one again. And again, we shift on the low string. third variation here is going to be the same arpeggio same order but we're going to start on the top note of each arpeggio so first off we're going to start at the lowest position go up to the highest
the fourth and final variation, you probably guessed it by now, we're gonna do the same thing starting on the top note of each arpeggio, but now we're gonna descend instead until we reach the lowest C major seven. the whole routine and like you can see here it does not take a long time so I would highly suggest that you do whatever variation you find more difficult again that's generally what I do when I have like a shorter routine where I play the whole thing and then I can feel on the day like oh, okay so this part didn't feel that good and since the the whole routine itself was so short I have no problems repeating the bad part a few extra times because I find that I, I, I progress much faster by doing that. So if you haven't tried that approach before, I would highly suggest that you give that a try and see what happens with your technique. <laughs> Today I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start. It's nine bucks and I think it's very underpriced, but I did it that way just so as many people as possible could be helped by this. So check that out.